So probability five, events that happen one after another. And we lead on then to independent events. We saw in the previous video with conditional probability, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. We cross multiply here to look at the probability of A intersection B on its own. The probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of B cross multiplying by the probability of A given B. And similarly we would have also the probability of A intersection B being the probability of A by the probability of B given A. This is known as the multiplication law. This may look more complicated than it actually is. But if we take a simple example, the probability in a deck of cards, the probability of getting a king and then a queen. So if you're going to throw your money away playing poker, you need to know the probabilities. So we look at the individual probabilities. The probability, we assume we get the king and then we assume we get the queen because that gives us the probability. So the probability of a king would be the probability of B or the probability of A, and it doesn't really matter. Is how many kings are there? Four out of 52. Now we'll do this question without replacement. So there's four queens for the second thing, and this 51 is taking in the probability that the first one has already happened. So 52 51s divided by 16, well, four goes into 52 13 times. So we're going to end up with 13 51s, which is 663. So four over six, six, three, which approximates to about 160. So you have a one in 160 chance. If you need to get a king followed by a queen, you're playing cards, keep your money in your pocket. Okay, so to practice this question, pause the video and we'll come back to the answer. Now, part two is going to be a question we've seen before. The subtraction law. So let's look at the probability that both cards are diamonds drawn from a pack, right? The first possibility is that there's 13 diamonds out of 52. And there's 51 cards left in the deck the second time. And there's going to be 12 diamonds. The 13 and the 52 gives me a 1 over 4. And the 4 goes into the 12 three times. So we're left with 3 over 51, which is 1 over 17. So that's the probability that they're both diamonds. Now... All the other options is where one, at least one, is not a diamond. So this is one minus the probability that they're both diamonds. So one minus one over 17 is equal to 16 over 17.
Okay, let's have a look at this one. Three cards are drawn drawn at random from a standard pack. Find a probability that all three are aces. Okay, how many aces are there? Four. So four over 52. So if you just dip your hand into a pack of cards, you have a one in 13 chance of getting an ace. Multiply by, there's three left and 51 cards. And then there's two of them left and there's only 50 cards left. Maybe you multiply them out. You get one over, five, five, two, five. And none are aces now. And none are aces gives us loads of options. There's 48 of them that aren't aces. So that'll be 48 over 52. Then there's 47 of them that are not aces. And there's 51 cards left. And then there's 46 that are not aces. And there's 50 cards left. So the bottom will stay the same. 5, 5, 2, 5. And it's going to be 4, 3, 2. If we use a calculator, 4, 3, 2, 4. For that one. Now, at least one is an ace. Now that's again, anytime you see at least one in probability, it's one minus the probability of none. And we have the probability of none right here. So one minus four three two four over five five two five gives us one two oh one one two oh one over five five two five exactly two are spades okay well there's a couple of options here okay give myself a bit of room so exactly two are spades now how can that happen we've three possibilities so we can get a spade a spade let, let's say x for not a spade we can get a spade not a spade and a spade and we can also get not a spade, a spade, and a spade. Just like X's and O's. Okay, so all of these three probabilities will be the same. And let's just write them out. Let's write the first one. To get a spade, we've 13 out of 52. And then there's going to be 12 left over 51. And then not a spade. Well, there's going to be 39 other cards in the 51. So 39 over 50 of the cards that are left because we have two spades already which would leave um 39 other options okay so we can see these probabilities are going to be the same spade again 13 over 52 just the numbers change around slightly now not a spade we've gotten a spade now we don't want a spade there's 51 cards left there's three spades left so it's going to be so of the 12 spades left, there'll be 39 that are not spades. And then there are still 12 spades left, and there will be 50 that are not spades. So you can see the numbers change around slightly, but we end up with the same denominators and the same number on top. So we can do the same here. Not spades, so there's 39 over 52 to begin with for this one here. Then we're going to get a spade, so there's 13 of them. And there's 51 cards left and then there's 12 spades left and we have 50 cards to choose from and if we do this calculation type it into a calculator we're going to get 117 over 850 is what my calculator simplifies it down to 117 over 850 okay so we could be asked questions about independent events the easiest way to show that something is independent is if the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. I think this is probably the easiest thing to use if we're asked to show events are independent. We just fill them into this formula and get the intersection and show that it's equal to the product of the two things happening. There is other ways though. The probability of A would be equal to the probability of A given B. Or the probability of B would obviously be equal to the probability of B given A. Three ways to show events are independent. Write these down and we'll have a look at some questions. Okay, so use one of the formulas to the right to show that A and B are independent. Okay, well let's have a look. The probability of A 
is equal to null point for the probability of b is equal to not point three and the probability of a by the probability of b is equal to not point one two three four to twelve with two decimals which is equal to the probability of a intersection b therefore independent events